my question is for the three of you, why do you think that, so when we, when we see the film, we have the scenes that we have of you all, you know, in the in the present, but then we also have this, well, 2003, so to speak. <laughs> but then we also have the scene in the future, um, the scenes that um, Ezekiel is seeing in his visions, um, scenes that we see throughout the film. How do you connect the young women that we spend so much time with through the movie and make a through line to those women that they become or could become later in the future? Deep question. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like each of our characters step outside of our comfort zone in so many ways. Like our like for Maddie, her comfort zone and sphere is kind of like keeping herself guarded and keeping her walls up and not really letting letting anybody in. And so throughout the course of the movie and then as she becomes a superhero, she's continuously pushing herself outside of her comfort zone. And um, that feels really interesting to explore. I think it's, what's really fascinating in this film is you see these characters grow as grounded individuals and they have such a transformation from the beginning of the film to the end as human beings. And that's what makes it so exciting to see how do they grow from there to become the superheroes that everybody knows from the comic books. Yeah, um, I, I did something interesting the other day. I read one of my earlier, my earliest like diary entries. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting to see how I had all these insecurities and they kind of consumed me. And it was interesting to see my growth growing out of them, but also how they're still somewhat present to this day, but much smaller. Um, and it's, I feel like this is like the reverse of that. You get to see their future strengths and how they came from their insecurities consuming them to like only informing them. Yeah. And it's interesting how we see that in the movie too, because it's like we, we see, we kind of see the future inform the present, so to speak. Mm -hmm. like, Vice versa. So it's interesting how the the format of the movie itself kind of has is kind of reflective, so to speak. Um, and also for the three of you, how is it just like creating chemistry together um, in some of those wild scenes? You know, I was telling Dakota, I was like, I was kind of stressed for passing during this movie too, because I was like, you know, they're not listening. I'm like, they're not listening. They're not listening. <laughs> 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 Teenagers, like, come on. <laughs> is also rising. But um, how is it like just filming some of those, so to, for lack of a better term, chaotic scenes and like trying to present that bond that these characters had to create rather quickly, you know, not knowing each other to going together and like having to basically help protect each other? I feel like we naturally just created that bond amongst each other. Totally. I was saying earlier, like, I felt like the story kind of mirrored our experience on set. Like, on set, we literally were thrown into, like, a, you know, relatively chaotic environment that all film sets are. And we kind of were like, okay, we're going to be working together every day. We didn't hate each other in the beginning, though, which was good. Yeah, we automatically were like, okay, I like you girls. And then it started to build up and, like, our relationship started to deepen from there. So it was kind of cool how, like, the journey of our characters kind of mirrored our our friendship journey too, especially because that day in the um, in the forest where we're all kind of like plopped together for the first time was our first day filming <laughs> too. So it was like our first time genuinely doing a scene together. So that kind of like newness and suspicion or whatever it was, was kind of natural. And then the connection that happened in the moment was also natural. I mean, it's inevitable like, we're all really beautiful, talented girls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so much in common. So first off, immediately what intrigued me about this character was, you know, to be a, you know, quote unquote superhero film, the lead character is not what you would expect, you know, like no, no spandex, no latex, no super suit, um, and not really your traditional superpowers that you would expect. So for you, what do you think was compelling for you about Cassie and this character, especially being that it was this sort of character kind of being what we may not expect in a superhero movie. Um, well, I loved that she was a young woman whose superpower is her mind, and I loved that it's her origin story, and so there's room to kind of 
develop a really complex character and dynamics with the other characters and and then she does end up in a super suit and she does have all of that in the end so it felt like a real journey to get to that place yes yes and what was it like um being playing cassie and having her um, interact with the other, the, the three young women, the, the spider women. Because throughout the film, I was like, if I was Cassie, I would be stressed out by the way, <laughs> by the way they're acting <laughs> and not following directions and all that sort of things. So what was it like, you know, playing this character, but also having to be this like, you know, I guess, so to speak, like a motherly, or not motherly, maybe like an auntie type figure to these younger characters. It was a really natural dynamic. It, you know, they, they're they such bright, talented young women, and I felt, I f it was more like a sisterly dynamic. You know, it wasn't, um, there's obviously an age difference, but it's not insane, and, and I, I don't know. It was just fun to, like, get to know them and work alongside them, and, and I think it's fun with Cassie in the movie because she's so annoyed by them, but she really loves them deeply, and it felt really authentic. I wanted to ask, did you have, um, I guess, any history or an affinity for um, superhero films or comic book movies um, that led you to want to be a part of this project? Yes. Yes, it all started with my big brothers. When I was a kid, they would read the comic books, and I, uh, you know, I would have some you know, glimpse and uh, drawings and all. But then I moved to to the to Panimation mangas and all. And I went back to the comic books and the Marvel world and all, thanks to the movies and series and all. So I was interested in it and uh, having the opportunity to to play in a movie such as Madam Web was a great thing for me as an actor and as a uh, let's say as a kid as well, you know, because I like from time to time when I have the opportunity to switch places with the kid that, that's still living inside of myself. I'm like, that's your turn. <laughs> yes, yes, I love that, I love that. Um, and in this film, the character of Ezekiel Sims, he's like, he's like, a, he's a villain, but he, the character even has a line in the movie where it's like, you know, um, talk to Dakota's character about how like, you know, what would you do? Would you do the same thing if you were in the situation that I'm in? So how do you think this character in particular kind of is different from the mold that we would expect from your typical, you know, superhero movie villains? Because it it adds a bit, a, a bit of nuance just to know, like, even if you may disagree with someone's actions, if you were in their position, what would you do, you know? Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh... If I was in his position, I, I I would accept fate. I thought about it. Actually, that was that maybe was the most important question in this uh, character for me. You know, like, what would you do? And uh, the interesting thing with um, Ezekiel is that he's not just you know a villain. If he didn't have this curse, he wouldn't have chased his girls or fight Madame Web. He would have continued his life and uh, taken advantage of his life thanks to the powers he's had, you know, how. Uh, but in this case, it's just, it turns his life into a nightmare and it became an obsession yeah. and a fighting for survival. So you have two ways, accepting or just fighting back. And for him, it's just a question of, uh, you know, trying to keep his own death from happening. First off, for you, for what I do know about the character um, from the comics, at least from the most of this film, it's very it's a, a, a departure from the comic book to what we see on screen as Dakota Johnson's portrayal of Cassie. Um, in crafting the story for this movie, um, what was it like, you know, bringing a different version of this character that comic book fans may be used to? 
Well, I mean, look, it's incredibly exciting because she is a new character for many people. And, you know, she's in a standalone world, which meant that we had a little bit more freedom. And I think the thing to do or the thing that we looked at is certainly taking the spirit of the character to see who she is and who she becomes. And then the fun is uncovering how she gets there. You know, what is that backstory, which often you do in rehearsals. You know, you'll sit down with an actor and you'll talk about the backstory of a character and what they might have been through and, you know, where they've come from and their journey. And then this is one where we actually get to dramatize that and and play that out in full which felt really exciting and a great way for her to you know offer us as the audience to experience the early stages of clairvoyance with her you know as opposed to just watching somebody with their powers right yes yes that's interesting because when i was speaking with um the curator of young women i was talking about how like you know the it's interesting how the film you know opens up with we see when early in the film we see their future or what Ezekiel was seeing. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of how like we see that at the beginning and then see how the, the, the past kind of informs that and reflects on that. So it's kind of interesting that you say that as <laughs> well. It, it, it is, exactly. And I think you just touched on something there that is very much a theme of the movie, that for Cassie, she really has to understand her past in order to see where she is in the present and then she can actually fully realize her ability to see the future you know and i think that was really interesting and felt like you know without wanting to say we're making a polemic or overloaded with profundity it's just something that i think you know is really relevant today yes yes and you have such a, a deep history and a deep resume of um tv work how do you think your experience directing television was able to help you um help inform um this project oh i mean without doubt i've been privileged enough to direct over 100 episodes of television so you know without doubt every single one I've done has taught me something I've learned something about the craft and I've been able to hone and develop it you know working on some very small things and some quite big tv series as well where there's an awful lot of expectation and you know that has some big effects as well so you know I definitely think that without that foundation I wouldn't have been able to just pick up Mad and Web and, and do do what I was able to do with it so it's all informed it and of course you know having dipped my toe into the Marvel arena before with Jessica Jones that was obviously a very helpful foundation going back into the world Yes, yes. Well, thank you so, so much for chatting with me, and I cannot wait for more people to watch this movie. Oh, thank you so much, Trey. It's been so nice to meet you.